Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with your NCAA tournament Fade the Public edition for day one, Thursday, March the 21st. I'm going to give you some of the most public underdogs. Ding, ding, red flag alert. There's some public dogs on Thursday's card. And I'm also going to give you a little bonus segment on how to fill out a bracket, some Fade the Public strategies. For those of you doing a bracket contest, that's coming up free for you in this video in just a moment. Hey, quick reminder, if you're finding this useful, give it a thumbs up, a like. Also, comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. Here's what I want you to do. I want a double-digit seed that you think can make the Sweet 16. We're going to check back a week from now and see who got it right. Once again, that's your sleeper pick, a double-digit seed that you think will make the Sweet 16 next week. Put it in the comments below. Let's see how many of these underdog upsets we can pick and win and learn and earn together here on Wager Talk TV. By the way, hit subscribe and click the bell for instant alerts. I'm planning on doing a Friday edition tomorrow afternoon for Friday as well here on the channel. All right, before we get to those bracket tips, I do want to let you know there's a few public dogs on the Thursday card. Now, the public consensus is not quite as strong and as deep as it is for the NFL when I do this video every week. Uh, but still, this time of the year, there's a lot of public money involved. And I always like to look when there's public dogs, because as you know, the public's in general plays favorites. So when they're heavy on an underdog, that sometimes can find us some value going the other way. And there's a few dogs that jumped out to me, which the public is liking here on Thursday's round one. Uh, McNeese State, they're fading Gonzaga. I was a little bit surprised by that. Um, you don't expect to see the public uh, fading a powerhouse team like Gonzaga. But the Zags were down a bit this year, but they came on strong down the stretch. Kind of took care of St. Mary's. You know, it looked like St. Mary's was stepping up, winning the regular season. But Gonzaga said, no, we're not done yet. So I thought it was a little bit interesting that the public is on McNeese. Uh, McNeese, a very good team, though. They're balanced offensively and defensively. They're number 61 in the Ken Palms, top 90 both offense and defensively. And they do play a little bit slower. So if they're able to slow things down, that could cause some problems from Gonzaga. Uh, but the, once again, the Zags are used to it against teams like St. Mary's in their own conference. But the public is on McNeese State. Um, that's one of the public dogs. That's at 725 Eastern Thursday night. Um, another one that jumped out to me, the public is on NC State. Uh, plus the five points against Texas Tech. That's a late game at 940 Eastern Thursday night. Not a surprise. NC State made a monster run. They upset Duke as an 11-point favorite, 11-point dog in the ACC tournament. Advanced to play Virginia in the semis last Friday night. And, of course, they had a miraculous three at the buzzer to force overtime and win. And then a huge upset is a 9.5, 10-point dog against UNC in the finals. NC State was 17-14. and 14 before winning five games in five nights last week. Looks like a good fade spot for me. I think this is a spot where we do fade the public with a good Texas Tech squad. That's at 940 Eastern on Thursday night. Another game late Thursday night. The public's involved in these late games Thursday night at 955 Eastern. Public is looking at Samford, seven-point dog against Kansas. Definitely some injury information factored into this fade here. And I don't disagree. You know, we don't just blindly fade the public. And this is a spot in which I think the public is right with Sanford plus the seven points. A good 29-5 and five team. They do play up-tempo, which Kansas likes. Normally that's a concern. I usually look to play the slower teams against Kansas, but Kansas was much weaker away from home this year. And keep in mind, they're without their best player, McClure, and their center, their big man, is hurt as well. This is a very weak four seed. I could definitely see a 13-4 upset here. I agree with the public on Sanford. Going down the list, a couple other games in which I see some public sentiment. Um, nothing quite as crazy as the, the ones we just talked about. Uh, the public is leaning towards Duquesne against BYU. You know, BYU is a team that was really strong earlier in the season. They were actually fourth overall in the nation in the Ken Palm rankings at one point earlier this year. Um, but that obviously, uh, they fell off a little bit second half of the season. We'll see how strong the Mountain West really is and how the Big 12 and these other conferences, BYU moved over to the Big 12, of course. We saw Houston win the regular season, fall short against a good Iowa State team in the finals. But uh, BYU not getting much love, a little bit of a public sentiment on Duquesne. That's an early game at 1240 Eastern. And uh, one other game also on the daytime card, um, I think Wagner might be getting a little bit of public sentiment against UNC, which is always strange because, you know, obviously North Carolina's a powerhouse team, but Wagner just won the first four game on Tuesday night. But keep in mind, this is the second slowest team in the country. So yes, maybe they can slow down UNC and cause some problems, hang within that huge number at plus 25. The problem is Wagner's one of the worst offensive teams in the country. I actually like Wagner team total under in this game. A little sneaky way to play this. Just in case they slow things down, I think either way they're going to have trouble scoring against a very good North Carolina defense. It's sixth best defense in the country. Uh, so Wagner team total under would be my preference, but it does look like the public leaning a little bit towards the Wagner Seahawks as well. 
All right, those are some public leans for you on the Thursday afternoon and nighttime card. I'll be back with an additional Friday video for the Friday games tomorrow here on the channel. Hit subscribe, click the bell for instant alerts when it goes live. In the meantime, since the tournament hasn't started yet, I'm going to give you some bracket tips. You know, you always want to have kind of a game theory when you're in a huge pool, big bracket contest. Not only do you have to pick winners, obviously, but you also have to kind of get lucky and hope maybe going against the grain gets you some extra bonus points when the public loses. So a couple of quick things. It's always fun to pick upsets, right? And we all know that the upsets happen in round one, two, even three. But most brackets are weighted heavily towards the final couple rounds, which means you really have to get the final four, the finals, and almost the champion correct to have a choice, a chance of winning. So have fun with those first, second round upsets. Get your one or two points. But if it's 4, 8, 16, 32 points each round, if it doubles like a lot of bracket contests do, you got to get the final rounds right. And historically speaking, you've got to have the big boys in the championship and more importantly, winning the championship. Now, in the history of the Elite Eight, on average, three out of four number one seeds make the Elite Eight. Last year, that was the first time in history that no number one seeds made the Elite Eight. Connecticut went on to win the whole thing as a four seed over five seed San Diego State. That was an Real unusual situation. But even with that, UConn was still number four in the Ken Palms when the tournament began. They finished number one overall. So they were a vastly underseeded four seed. Who could that team be maybe this year? Well, what about Auburn? If you're looking at the Ken Palm rankings right now, it's Connecticut, Houston, Purdue, all one seeds. And then Auburn is the fourth team in the rankings. Now, I'm using the Ken Palms just because they're a widely used, publicly available, free. A source for power rankings, efficiency ratings, tempos. Obviously, I go a lot deeper. I have proprietary models that I use. But the Kim Palms are a good starting point because everyone can go in there and use it for their own research and handicapping. So yes, Auburn looks very underrated this year. They're also top 10 both offense and defensive efficiency. Um, they're actually the only team, I believe, in the country right now that is top 10 in both rankings. Really balanced attack. Problem is, they got to play UConn in the Sweet 16. So if you, I think UConn is the team to beat, and they're number one for a reason. Uh, but if you're looking to mix your brackets up a little bit, you know, maybe Auburn over UConn and whoever wins that game makes the finals, maybe wins the whole thing. The problem, though, is Auburn has a very difficult matchup in round one against Yale. And the reason I say that is Yale plays a slow down half court style, which definitely could cause trouble. So that's why I'm a little bit lukewarm on Auburn going deep because they might not even get by round one. Uh, but they are a very good team that was vastly underseated. So once again, if you're looking for a little bit of a sleeper, Auburn as a four seed, I think vastly underseeded, just like Connecticut was last year as a four seed. By the way, UConn was going back to 2002, the last 21 tournaments. UConn last year, the only four seed to win the championship. In fact, going into last year, 19 of the previous 20 champions were one, two, or three seeds. You heard me right. 19 of the previous 20 were one, two, or three seeds. Connecticut won as a four seed last year. So that means now 20 of the last 21 champs, four seed or better. And I do think four is a good cutoff this year. I mentioned Auburn. We've got some powerful four seeds. Alabama, the second best or third best offensive team in the country. The problem with Bama, they're just 112th on defense. And historically speaking, you got to be like top 25 by the end of the tournament uh, to be a champion defensively. In fact, every team's been 19th or better except for Baylor three years ago. They finished 22nd. They were 44th defensively efficiency when the tournament started. So you basically have to be top 50. Alabama, nowhere close to that. Uh, Duke, though, another dangerous four seed. In fact, they're eighth overall in the Ken Palm, so another four seed vastly underseeded. So even though Connecticut, the only four seed in the past two decades to win the championship last year, both Auburn and Duke, I think, are very dangerous four seeds this year. Uh, not so much Bama. And then Kansas, way down the list, talked about them earlier. They're beat up. They're injured. I'm not even sure they get out of round one. So Auburn and Duke would be the two four seeds, I think, that can make some noise. As far as those one seeds, they have won 14 of the previous 21 tournaments. 67% of the time, the last two decades, they've won. Uh, Connecticut, Houston, the best two teams in the country, in my opinion. Purdue is third on that list. I'd be careful with Purdue. Matt Painter, now 1-14 in 14 against the spread in Big Ten tournament games, including some underperformances this year. And he's been eliminated the last three years by a double-digit seed, including a 16 seed last year. Now, I know when it happened to Virginia, they came back and won the whole thing in 2019. But keep in mind, they were fortunate to win like three of those games by buzzer beaters, last seconds, overtimes. I don't like Purdue. I think they underachieve each and every year. I'd be careful with them. The other one seed, North Carolina, is only ninth in the Ken Palm rankings, which makes it look like they're maybe a little bit of a phony one seed. So the two one seeds, I think, are the teams to beat are Connecticut and Houston. The four seeds would be Auburn and Duke. Let's look at those two and three seeds. They've won five of the last 21 tournaments, and um, they usually are in the mix. Um, Arizona coming off a loss. I think they could be live. A very balanced attack, eighth and 11th offensive and defensive efficiency, along with Auburn, one of the most balanced teams in the country. 
Iowa State, 57th on offense, first on defense. They just won the Big 12 tournament. I think they probably falter here. Their offense just not good enough to win six straight games. And keep in mind, you got to win six straight, which means when you're not a powerhouse offense, you usually have one night off, one off night rather. That'd be the knock for me on Iowa State. I don't think they can get it done. Uh, Marquette, 12th overall in the Ken Palms, 22nd and 20th. Maybe an underrated two seed. And the reason I say that is because if you look at the ESPN bracket challenge, uh, Marquette right now is only 10th on the list for championships, even though they're a number two seed. Just can't get out of my mind how they got blown out by UConn, though. I just don't know if they can step up in class. But they've got a great coach, Shaka Smart. Took an 11 seed VCU to the Final Four back in 2011. So there are some things working for Marquette. I would say that may that might be a little bit of a fade the public selection there. I don't think many people probably have them going as far as they possibly could. And um, as far as the two seats, Tennessee is the other one. Rick Barnes is underachieved, just like Matt Painter. Um, so we got to wonder about Tennessee. 29 and three offense, defense. I'm not sure their offense is consistent enough to win six straight. Those three seeds, real quick on the way out here. How about Creighton, the 11th team overall in the Ken Palms, 13th and 24th. You know, most national champs, in fact, the last eight national champs have finished with a higher offense than defensive rating. Uh, once again, that's why Iowa State, Tennessee would both fall out. Uh, Creighton does qualify, 13 and 24. Um, so I think they're definitely live as a three seed. And we have to go a little bit further down the list. We have Baylor, 6 and 63. Just don't think that defense is good enough to get it done for Baylor. Kentucky, 5th and 110 on defense. Same thing with Alabama. Kentucky and Alabama, historically, no teams that bad defensively have won the title since the Ken Palm ranking started back in 2002. And um, the other one is, I want to look at real quick as far as the three seeds. Who am I missing? Illinois, 10th over on the Ken Palms, 2nd and 92nd defensively. So once again, some weak defenses here. Illinois, Alabama, Kentucky, Baylor. I think they just aren't strong defensively to be a national champ. So I would eliminate them if you're looking to pick a winner. Hey, those are some bracket tips for you on all the, the, the 16 teams seated top four in each region. And once again, they've won 20 of the last 21 uh, national championships. The only one that wasn't, by the way, was 2014, seven seed. Guess what? UConn got it done that year. Um, the Blue Bloods seem to be there each and every year, whether it's Connecticut, Kansas, UConn, Duke, UNC, Kansas. Uh, most likely it'll be one of them again this year. But Houston's a team that has the potential to make some noise. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts on Houston. Do they get it done this year? They've underachieved in years past. Could this be the year? Who do you like for the national championship? And by the way, one other quick bracket tip I'll give you. Consider using the play-in round winners. Colorado State has already advanced to Thursday's game. They're only a small dog in that game. And also the Colorado-Boise State game later tonight on Wednesday, uh, the winner of that game will advance obviously to Friday. And the reason I say consider using them is a lot of people are just lazy. They turn their brackets in early on Monday or Tuesday, so they just use that default team that's in the next round. You can sometimes pick up a little fade to public bonuses by using the play-in winners. This year's the first time ever they've been 10 seeds. They're usually 11 seeds, occasionally 12 seeds. Of course, we had a 16 seed last year, Farley Dickinson do it. But this year they're 10 seeds, so they're decent teams. Colorado State's already advanced and it'll be either Colorado or Boise as well. Consider using them in the round of 16 because you might get some bonus points from people that filled out their brackets early and did not even look at the play-in games. Hey, those are some quick bracket tips for you along with some Thursday public underdogs. I'll be back tomorrow on Friday here with your Friday edition of NCAA Tournament Fade the Public. By the way, I have a huge card this Thursday. Seven best bets. Count them. Seven best bets in college basketball for Thursday afternoon and night. Three day, four nights, and I've made an incredible seven for one special at wagertalk.com. It's available right now. Individually, each game is 25, or you can get all seven for just 29. That's right. Four dollars gets you the other six games included. Don't miss out an incredible seven for one all inclusive Thursday basketball special for just $29. Or if you want the all day, get the $39 package, which includes my complete bracket. The bracket by itself is also 25. My pick for all 63 games in the tournament, seven first-round upsets, national championship best bet, bonus long shot, and additional upset picks for those of you doing multiple brackets. Hey, the bracket alone is 25, or you can get the bracket, all seven best bets tonight on, on Thursday afternoon and night. And the rest of the week, a seven-day package is normally 99, but it's just 69 with promo code Merrill 7 I've given you a lot of options. No matter which option you choose, don't miss out this Thursday. My NCAA complete bracket along with seven best bets for the NCAA tournament on Thursday afternoon and night. It's a loaded, deep card. It's the deepest, strongest college basketball card I've had all since season, bar none. And there's several ways to get it. Once again, the 7-for-1 special, if you want just the best bets, 
is 29. If you want just the bracket, it's 25. If you want a one day all access, it's 39. Or the best deal, special promo code on this video only, you're not going to find it on the website, is Merrill7. That gets you seven days all access, normally 99 for just 69, an instant $30 discount. That includes all seven best bets on Thursday, the bracket, every NBA play for the next week, all my plays on Friday, Saturday, Sunday in the tournament as well. Seven days and nights. Choose the seven day all access for 99 at checkout. Use promo code Merrill7. Two R's, one L. M E R R I L 7, the number seven. Merrill7. And you get it for just 69. Don't miss out. It's a huge card this Thursday. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Hey, thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on Twitter and X. Also post free plays throughout the week on Instagram and IG. Follow me there. And don't forget, comment below, who do you like on Thursday in the NCAA tournament? And throw in your long shots, your sweet 16 long shots. It's got to be a double-digit seed. Pick a team. It can be a couple teams that you think make the sweet 16. Throw in some national title picks as well. Comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. Thumbs up, like if you're finding the free video useful. And don't forget, hit subscribe and click the bell for instant alerts so you know when my Friday edition of Fade the Public is available here on Wager Talk TV. Best of luck. Enjoy the games. And stay tuned right here to Wager Talk TV for more great college and pro basketball issue content and free handicapping coming up for you next here on the channel.